All right, everyone, welcome to the Gestalt Education Show. So today we have a really special guest for you today. So uh, this person is a 17-year Navy veteran. Uh, he's treated presidents, Supreme Court justices, congressmen, uh, the best in the best of the, of the world. Uh, he served time at Walter, Lee, Walter Reed Medical Center, and uh, we're really excited for him. Uh, he is the president of Parker University right now, Dr. Bill Morgan. So, Taylor. Yeah, thank you so much for oh, being you. with us today. Um, so this is uh, the, the start episode one of our Clinical Savant series. And so uh, <laughs> we didn't tell them what the name of this show was right at the beginning, uh, but uh, Clinical Savant is, uh, is one of those things that this is, this is hide in, in held, hide in, or held in high regard for our people around us, that, uh, people that we think are leading the profession and that are progressing it towards uh, what we really think. So, yeah, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here with Dr. Morgan. I, uh, I tell everyone who will listen, I just feel like at a time where like the profession needs leadership. I, I, we all kind of look at Dr. Morgan as like, he's the one who's taken this torch and leading us. And uh, he's always, uh, ever since he's been president here, um, the seminars here on campus and then also in Las Vegas, which I've been a part of both of those, they're just absolutely first class. And uh, yeah. yeah, we just think the world of uh, Dr. Morgan. We always say we have, uh, we have two Super Bowls in the, in the uh, seminar circuit, the MPI Adjustathon and then Parker Vegas. So oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> those, are, it's those, like are two, misses, yeah. those are our two favorites. And so um, with that being said, Dr. Morgan, so um, you are the contemporary uh, president. Uh, mm -hmm. You're leading the profession right now, someone that we really uh, seek after. And so uh, what do you think is the key or what has made you so successful in bridging this gap between um, you know the the chiropractor from five years from now versus what we're at right now and and what what's uh, what's pushing you towards that well we're we're going through is 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 we talked about before the show began is i was in practice for over 30 years yeah. making my living one adjustment at, at, a, at a time and and for me as i started off as had my own practice and then was a started working in multidisciplinary clinics and eventually I've worked in five hospitals and to see the care that's required from chiropractors and, and also the level of, tr of education we have and how appropriate it is for treating sick people in hospitals is like yeah. it is appropriate and when I was in private practice for 13 years I tell people I practice the same year 13 times <laughs> because I really was so oh, yeah. focused on the practice. I thought I, I already learned everything I needed to in chiropractic college. I'm a good adjuster and I'll just perfect what I know. But when I went to Bethesda Naval and I started treating members of Congress in the White House, Supreme Court, and you know, the heads, you know, the, the heads of the military, I was like, I better up my game. So from there, I, I really poured myself into improving. And, and really, you're either improving or you're declining. Mm. Those are the two choices. Mm. If you're not, if you don't have a plan for growth, I guarantee right now, you're declining. Mm. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so one of the things I did when I, I got to Bethesda is I spent the first three years doing morning report with neurosurgery and um, neuroradiology. So from that, I was, a, I was able to up my game and basically really learn MRI and, and advanced imagery pretty well. Yeah, so. absolutely. And then fr from that moment, I guess, uh, you know, you t we talked about clinical practice. That's something that we really wanted to do. And, and one of the, the tenets of Gestalt Education is we believe that seeing patients is important <laughs> and, and seeing those clinical things and, and failing with patients and struggling with patients and succeeding is one of the tenets of, of teaching other people and doing that. So how has that kind of set up the curriculum at Parker to, to make it one of the, the I mean, right now, one of the best schools in the nation. And I like to think the, so. The best school, yes. Yeah. Well, the, the deal is, is what does it take to become a good clinician? What does it take to be a good chiropractor? Mm. What are the skills that are needed to succeed? And there's, there's different schools of thought. Some people see, say lots of patients, see a lot of patients, and sign, sign up, have patients sign contracts. Others would be interact with that patient to, to evaluate them up front, mm. give them a detailed evaluation and examination, find out what's wrong with them, give them a sensible treatment plan. This usually involves chiropractic adjustments. <laughs> <laughs> and then move, move forward and with that and do a trial of treatment. If it helps, we continue on. If it doesn't, we try something else. Mm. It's what every patient wants. In fact, the, the, the thing I see that concerns me is when a patient walks into a chiropractor's office and they change the goal from what the patient wants to what the doctor wants. Mm. Because the patients aren't gonna trust us if they don't, like if somebody comes to you with back pain and you change the conversation to wellness, mm -hmm. well, if you don't help their back pain, why are they gonna trust you with yeah. wellness? Right, yeah. Take mm -hmm. care of the back pain, they'll trust you for the next conversation. Mm -hmm. 
So true. Yeah, I think that's a really good point of like, um, you know, pointing it towards patient-centered care. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the, the whole tenet of, you know, it's 2021 now, and I think patient-centered care more than ever is important, and, and that's kind of what's going to lead the healthcare system. And so um, you're 100% right. We've been lucky enough to have a couple of your interns from, from Parking University oh, in awesome. our office. Yeah, and so, they're doing great. Um, it's it, great human beings, and uh, we can tell that they're set up for success. And so uh, that's that's really important to to our, our clinical practice, mm -hmm. not only help, having them help us with patients, uh, but also towards our education system. So that's really awesome. So... What, uh, yeah, what do you think, uh, what's the future of chiropractic? Like, give me your five-year, 10-year, and then I'd, I'd be curious to know, like, what you think Parker is in 10 years. Like, well, what's it? you know, we, I've been involved in several um, studies over the years. We, you know, as I said, I was in the Board of Trustees for another college that we, you know, Palmer had a, uh, a poll, they, the Gallup poll they, they commissioned when I was on that board, to see what, are, what, is the, what do the people think of us? And that, that was a very valuable um, poll. Bad, yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, only 5% of the population looks at us as well as professionals. Mm. So the thing we've been pushing all this time has not resonated with those folks. But also we've used work with futurists. And the futurists over the years, and I've been involved in several of these renditions of having futurists that analyze where we're at. And there's, you know, they usually come to three, three conclusions. Either we're gonna, we're gonna be accepted and we're gonna do great, we're gonna stay where we're at, or something bad's gonna happen and <laughs> We're Let's go. not talk about that. Yeah, Let's yeah. Right, move on. Well, you know, the, and, and so, you know, people were worried when I'm adjusting particular people in the White House, what would a bad outcome would really devastate the profession. But so my belief is if we embrace the evidence mm. and don't overstate the evidence, mm. people will, will be trustworthy. Right, yeah. And if, you know, if you, ne if you're, if you're just overstate the, what we've got all the time, People don't trust you, but sure. if you you know you know where the the limits of the uh, evidence is. You say that, so when you prove something else or you substantiate your your claims, you, people will trust you with that. And for me, it is is if you're trustworthy, doctors will will refer to you, right? And uh, medical doctors will refer to you. And I think collaboration is the future. To answer your question, Taylor, yeah. shortly, collaboration is the future. Sure. Either leadership and yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you. Um, so like for me in the athletic world, we often get the question like, how do you give your best performance on the biggest stage? You gave the example, like you're treating the president and things mm -hmm. like that. So when you start to get a little bit anxious and nervous and you're giving these treatments, what are some of the things that you did to still be able to give the best treatment you've ever given to somebody that you know would be potentially the president of the United States? And I know before yeah. you say <laughs> we treat everyone the same, but I- That's right. Okay, so yeah, but besides that, so how do you you know get your mindset right to when you're working on somebody that is higher prestige? Mm -hmm. and, I, and we always talk about, we wanna always treat everybody. You're gonna treat a Medicaid patient just like you would the president of the United States, that's a given. But we all know that there's a little more pressure involved in certain situations. So how did you deal with that? I'm sure your military background helped with that. Or it, it did. And for the military, for me, what was a bigger deal was when I showed up because I, I was enlisted for many years, 14 years active. And then I was I worked for the for the Navy for another 20 years. So essentially, most of my adult life, I worked for the Navy. Um, but I remember my boss was a captain in the Navy, and when I, you know, I am, you know, my probably 40 years old, he'd walk in, I'd pop at attention. And it was harder for me to get used to treating captains and people at, at rank. Sure, yeah. And then as that got, you know, I would treat members of Congress, Supreme Court, and eventually I get calls down to the White House. And the White House call was interesting because, um, now what happens with a VIP is they do something we almost call the full court press. Mm. You give them too much care. Mm. Instead of, if, if an average person comes in, you do a trial treatment. If that doesn't work, you work your way up to more invasive procedures. But we get called down to, the, to the, uh, this particular place downtown Washington. There's five of us. And there was a, let's see, there was a, a neurologist, a neurosurgeon, a um, orthopedic surgeon, a pain management doc, and chiropractor, five of us. And everybody did an examination. They go, well, I could do this, this, and this but you probably really should start with the chiropractor. Ah. And then one after another, they kept pointing to the chiropractor because that was the sensible care. The standard of care is you start with the least invasive first, and they believed in me because we'd already had a relationship established and a trusting relationship, which is part of where we need to go with this. Yeah. So anyway, we, we, that's how, that's how I, I started at that particular um, place downtown Washington, D.C. And I think with like the pro teams and the colleges, it's a, the stratification mm -hmm. is similar. 
And then I think if you do a good job, then I think like it, you can almost kind of start to reverse that stratification over time, you know. And I think that's that's what the profession is currently trying to do, and that's what that's Definitely. what we're doing. Uh, I think another another question that uh, a lot of us are wanting is as uh, you're the leader in the profession, we're kind of hitching our wagon to you. Mm -hmm. And so, what can um, us normal chiropractors and private practices have do to continue this per progression and mm -hmm. integration and things that we're talking about? And what, what are the things that uh, you know someone in the middle of Kansas or you know Texas well, can do you know, to we, do that? We don't even know who the best chiropractor in the world is. It mm -hmm. could be that she was practicing in the middle of, of a small, in Kansas, a small town, and she, mm -hmm. she just might have the ma master the adjustment. Mm -hmm. I say, first off, what sets us apart is that adjustment. Mm -hmm. right. Master the adjustment. Couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. Master the technique, master the craft, mm -hmm. but then also don't believe your own, you know what. <laughs> you know, we basically be humble enough to know that there's confidence, certainty, and curiosity. If you have confidence, you still can have curiosity, but if you have certainty, that means you've, you know the answer. You're not even gonna answer, ask any questions. So what I try to have our students have here is confidence that their adjustment is the right thing to do sure. and the right time to apply it. Mm. But they're still curious enough to understand that there might be another way sure. or to, to analyze the research. But if mm. you're certain, you don't even wanna hear about mm. the research. You don't wanna hear about the evidence. Yeah. So what we found is certainty is the enemy of curiosity. Mm. And if you don't have curiosity, you're not gonna grow. And there's uh, one C even beyond certainty that's a problem, and that's cockiness. And we always talk about like, <laughs> yeah. how that nothing pushes you know, patients mm -hmm. away. And that's where like, when they rate like, you know, the average consumer's favorite practitioner, mm -hmm. um, chiropractors finish second behind nurse practitioners typically, and like orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon, like 14 and 15. And the reason is because of the orthopedic surgeons are coming across as being cocky, you know? So, and I think there's a fine line, you know, between, between that. So then we got to add a C to the C. Oh, that's yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, this is all C. spectrum here, so. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yeah. And I, I think too of like, uh, just what you said about certainty and, and maybe uh, the evidence, let's, let's talk about it. We're, we're very, I mean, I can't name a day in my life that I haven't poured over some research, but, um, <laughs> Where's the where's the happy medium between the um, no evidence, the evidence base where we're only doing things in literature and stuff like that, oh. and you know, like uh, where where are we at on there? Because I mean, there's some evidence-based groups that maybe don't want us to adjust, don't want us to palpate, don't want us to do those things that you know that that we hold pretty true and dear to our heart. I know a a very well-known chiropractor, well-published, who will not palpate his patients because the evidence does not support that. Mm. Um, if all we did was things that we had empirically proven, mm. if all we did was things that we could go to a research article and so this is what we do for this case, there'd be no <laughs> chiropractic. There'd be nothing. <laughs> there'd be no physical therapy, there'd be no surgeries, there would be nothing mm -hmm. because it's all the practice. There's no certainty in this. Mm. That's where certainty versus confidence. I'm mm -hmm. confident I'm gonna adjust this person and and in all likelihood, they'll respond to it in a positive way. There's no, there's no peer-reviewed studies validating the use of parachutes. Sure. I don't know if you've seen that article in the I British Medical that. Journal. <laughs> Journal. Okay. For the audience, you haven't heard this. They, there was a spoof article that came out in the British Medical Journal several years ago showing that parachutes don't work because they've never done a randomized control study right. where they put out half the group with no parachutes and half with. <laughs> and certainly if that worked, then you'd want to have a, a crossover group where mm. you would put the people who sure. perish randomly and randomize it. <laughs> and then you have a video of their face when it's happening, yes. right? <laughs> so we, if, if all you did was that, so we're not bound by it. We make our decisions based upon the best available evidence, but we're not bound by that. We can right. still try something. It's sensible to try things. I've had medical doctors who were fighting me coming to hospitals, eventually sending me their babies. Mm. And I'm like, well, you guys were, you guys were actually keep trying to keep me out of here. And they go, Actually, we've tried everything with this baby. We heard chiropractic works sometimes, you know, have at it. Sure. So, and taking, doing a trial treatment, there's nothing wrong with that. Right, of yeah. course. Yeah, making, ma making unsubstantiated promises, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, I think it's hard too, because like the present day younger generation is looking for like a quick fix, you know, and then, and, and, or they're looking for a hack in learning, you know, and to be great at palpating and adjusting. I mean, this is a lifelong journey. And I think like sometimes, that gets glossed over. So, you know, I feel like the apprenticeship phase of what we do is gone. It's like students leave, they think they should make six figures, they, they have mm -hmm. all these like, you know, things that they think in their mind that should happen. I remember when I was that age, I'm sure you were the same way, like, 
I just wanted to be the best at what I was doing. I mean, that was enough to keep my, my focus on that. And I feel like that has kind of left our younger generations personally. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that's a challenge for mm -hmm. you here as it was for me at Logan. But, um, you know, this new generation, that might be a good next question, mm -hmm. is like, how do we touch this new generation who is so tech savvy? And like, how do we use that to our benefit? And, you know. Well, it's in, in, in a hands-on profession. So one of the, some of the things we've benefited from, you've been on our campus, you've seen we got hit by a tornado, <laughs> and then COVID came. So we're going What a on, year. <laughs> yeah, bring it on. So, but with it, ultimately, what does a, what does a chiropractor use? What's the number one tool we use? It's, yeah, it's right here. This is so refreshing, Bill, just to, hear, <laughs> just to hear you say that. That's like, yeah. Fangirling over here. Chiropractic yeah. hand practitioner. Uh, it's what we do. It's what sets us, us apart. Um, some people would like to be in a, a different profession. Now, it's, as I tell our students, everything you learn here is chiropractic. Mm. My first patient, or the first week at, at, at Bethesda, I had a patient referred to me, and he had failed physical therapy and medical doctors, and he had come in with severe headaches. Mm. And as I did my, my history, like I was taught in chiropractic college, I took him to review systems, and I got to ears, and he says, yeah, I've, I uh, actually can't hear very well a lot of his ear. And it was hurting for a bit, and it's, but it doesn't hurt anymore. But I've got these headaches. So I, I took out my otoscope, and I looked in his good ear. looked good. looked in the other ear. It was his gray, pulpy mass. Mm. Well, it turned out he had a pseudomonas infection that had destroyed his inner ear, had occupied his entire mastoid. Looking at the CTs, the mastoid was eggshell thin. Mm. If I had adjusted him... I probably would have. He would have been all better. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He would have <laughs> yeah. would have cleared up right, right away. Right, right. Uh, but yeah, but the you know I probably would have broken his mastoid. <laughs> and, yeah, no but doubt. having found it and referred him, they ended up removing his mastoid in his inner ear. Wow. Is surgically, it was a bad. It was a pseudomonas infection. So that word of that got around the hospital pretty quick. And do you, how do you think my referral pattern went from there? Oh, I would Ridiculous. say skyrocket. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It so it feels like the profession is so binary. Like you cannot still do everything we're talking about. Be great with your hands, still palpate well, and still be evidence-based, you know? So I, I just feel like the profession's in a struggle right now. And I feel like with the pain sciences, which we, we love and we're a big fan of, however, it's like, it's like shifting that pendulum to where like our patients can adapt to anything. They don't need us. They, you know, they just need to like a, a pat on the back to say they're gonna be fine. And uh, it's been a real frustration of mine because it's basically, um, the people that are promoting that to me, they're not people who have huge practices and you know, like these people, and I, I look at the athletes, for example, like you're not gonna like walk into that scenario and then talk about their pain. Like you better have some skills that you're bringing to the table. Are you, you talking know? the biopsychosocial model? Yeah. yeah. Like, so to put, and you're- And it exists. I mean, we yeah. all know that. I mean, it's they, a part of the whole part tree of it. now, it's actually. Yeah. But if, if, if you're gonna give it to, uh, you know, there, I think people intuitively come to you it's, it's, there was a study that came out recently in, in uh, research. Oh, the knee arthritis study, that people who self-selected to running yeah, I saw had that. less. Well, there's so much involved with self-selection. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't going to work for everybody. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. So if we told you you're going to run, well, that person's going to get worse. Now, some people, I think people who, who feel, you know, a chiropractic adjustment would probably help this. Mm -hmm. I think they self-select into mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, and there are psychosocial issues sure. with this, too. And you need to address Play that. on that. But some people, it's like, you're, well, one thing, you're not going to stay in business if you're telling everybody it's all in their head. Right, yeah. Um, and the other thing is, when you touch people, you, you guys are palpators and adjusters. Yep. Um, I've had people, it's totally in their head. I've had other people, it's totally in their spine. Most people who come to me, it's in their spine, and I adjust them. Um, you make allowances for it, but I, my belief, and of course, the, you know, you know the, the three circles for evidence-based care, sure. it's, it's, you know, my, my beliefs, the best available evidence, and their beliefs. Yeah. Sitting in a room, there's, there's, there's three of us here. If you're a patient, and I'm, I'm the chiropractor, we have two-thirds of evidence-based care right here. Right. Right. I just have to make sure I consult the best evidence. Mm -hmm. Best evidence says, there's no reason I shouldn't adjust you. You know, I, I've, I've found these findings. We're going to do a trial treatment of adjusting. Mm -hmm. We'll see how you respond. Yeah. Um, no problem with that. If I've said, I've had friends who've kids, I had a, a friend of mine who's, who's, uh, whose son had cancer. Mm. The chiropractor promised him he can get him better. Seriously. Mm. And uh, another had GI problems. And it promised him. Now, you can, you can say, you know, chiropractic may help. Mm. 
But when you make those absolute promises, with checks you can't cash, you can get us, you can get yourself in pretty you big burned. trouble. Yeah, yep, absolutely. It doesn't help. Doesn't help us. So. Yeah, it doesn't help the profession, no. which is the main goal. Or the patient. Of, well, What's we're all the guys. best compliment you could get about one of your students? Like if someone who's been graduated for two years and they say, "I went to Parker University." Bill Morgan was a president. Like, what is the thing that would make you most proud that they would say about uh, a graduate of Parker? Or that they would say or the patient would say? No, the, well, either. We'll do well, the, the doctor would say that, that, I, that I learn to be a lifelong learner right. and that a, a fire was lit to never be satisfied with my, my adjusting skills or my head knowledge that's or perfect. my compassion. Uh, it's, Bill, that's, that's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, and I've, and for a patient, they got me better. Yeah. Or they referred me to somebody who got better. I, I remember I was in private practice and I started, I kept getting all these referrals from this one patient and I couldn't remember who this patient was. And I went back in the files and I looked at, oh, I remember this guy. He came in, he was kind of skeptical, of chiropractic and all this. And, and I'd done an evaluation and I told him, actually, I don't think I can help you. And, I, yeah. and um, so no, there'll be no charge for today's visit. I'm not going to accept you as a patient. It was mainly based upon his skepticism because mm. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, more dude, than my, you just wanted out. Yeah, yeah. I wanted out. Yeah. So this guy would go around and say, "Hey, that guy can't help you. He'll tell you." And he referred me more patients than than I than probably any other patient I ever had, and I didn't even accept him as a patient. Right. Wow. Yeah. And then the person who says, "I'm going to send you 50 people," they never send you a single soul. <laughs> you know, it's awesome. Well. Uh, Dr. Morgan, thank you so much for sitting down with us. I think uh, we, we far over extended our stay. It was enlightening to me, a little fire under me to, to sit down with you. We could tell your enthusiasm by mm. being around you and being on campus, honestly. I mean, uh, Parker is, is pushing the profession forward, and we're really happy to uh, be a part of it. Uh, me tagging along with Brett a little bit here and there, and, and uh, I, I'm really excited to see what the future of this, uh, this program has to offer and uh, what we can do with uh, the future of chiropractic. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, thank you. Perfect.